Hey folks, Cornell with YouTube Fish and Viz. Well, I'm back here out of my local lake and I'm now gonna call this Mother Nature's Grocery Store. In Maryland, we are not allowed to fish recreationally, but we can fish for food. So for the first time ever in the history of my channel, I have two rods with bobbers on them. Check that out. I got myself a marabou jig and I got myself an ultralight little soft plastic jig something or other. So I'm gonna go for some crappie. I've got two setups for crappie. And I'm looking for a black and fish sandwich tonight. I've got the gear that will also catch me a northern snakehead because if you may remember last year on my birthday, it was June 11th last year, I caught the first northern snakehead out of my local lake here in Maryland in the history of this lake and this lake's been around since the mid 80s. So I've got what it takes, uh, anything could go when it comes to snakehead. The last couple times I was out here fishing along these shorelines, I saw a couple snakeheads buried, tucked deep up into some of that muck and mess that they love to get into really, really shallow. So we're going to play. We're going to see if we can catch some meat fish today and uh, avoid the crowds of the grocery store and stay as far away from the world as we can. I'm out here all alone. I, there's a bunch of guys fishing, but they're way away from me. I got way back up in this creek that I love to fish and water temps are at 56 degrees. We got a cloud covered, beautiful 60 degree day with a light wind and uh, barely a stain to the water. So we've got great conditions. If I happen to catch a bass, so be it. They're not legal to catch and they're not legal to keep anyway this time of year. So I'll just have to throw them back if I can't bring them home, right? So that's the deal. We're gonna get at it. And we're gonna do some fishing during this crazy time of ours. I'm very confident those snakeheads aren't too fond of this chilly water, but you never know, and I don't know. So we'll find out if they wanna bite in this kind of water conditions. But I can guarantee you this, if things keep going the way they're going, we're looking at some warming weather the next week or so, uh, those snakeheads should be getting a little bit more active. And don't even think I'm not gonna be coming out here with some buzz baits along these edges and this thick stuff, uh, trying to get something to come up and whack it and uh, some bright colored frogs, all those kind of things those snakeheads love. I may be specific, specifically targeting those uh, in the next coming weeks, depending on how long it takes before we can get out here and fish the way we love to fish. While I'm casting this vibrating jig looking for snakeheads, I'm gonna chuck this uh, marabou jig out there. It's a little bit of a beefy uh, setup when it comes to bobber size, but it's actually a pretty decent sized little jig right there. So I got that on a slip sinker and that slip sinker's got a bobber stop right about there, handful of feet up. So I'm basically gonna drift it behind the boat in about 10 to 15 feet of water, right behind the boat while I cast. And if I have myself a suspended crappie out there, he'll hopefully grab it. So I'll set that drag just a little bit loose and we'll set this rod down and we're fishing. All right, no takers on that shoreline where I saw some suspended fish, which could have been crappie, panfish. By the way, there's all kinds of panfish in this lake of mine, which uh, is evident with the fact that I'm looking at about one, two, three, a handful of bobbers in the trees and in this little beaver dam. So this is a spot where uh, I see a lot of guys fishing for whatever, mainly crappie from what I can tell by the rigs they're using. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit right here. I'm gonna have this bobber dancing and this marabou jig hopefully in the face of some of these crappie that want to come home with me this is the most stained and warmest water on the lake so if there's any place to catch a snakehead catch some crappie catch some panfish this is the spot to do it and which is why i came back here and maybe collect a few extra bobbers for the next few weeks or months All right, guys, if it's a snakehead, that'd be great. Let's find out. It feels pretty big. What can we got here, guys? Oh, gosh, it's a big bass. <laughs> what can I do? I'm throwing a vibrating jig in the spring, but you know what? If I got to throw them back, I got to throw them back, right? But that's a great first fish of the day. <laughs> oh, it's a beauty. It's a chunky, beautiful fish. Make one heck of a meal, but he's not, gonna, he's not going for the frying pan. He's going right back in the lake. There's a beautiful spring bass that ate my bait. All right, let's get this back in there since I'm not recreationally bass fishing and we'll move on and hopefully catch something that we can bring home. Now, understandably, it's going to be a very rare day that I catch a snakehead. They're out here, but that is the target species. That's what we're trying to do is get something I can bring home to eat. But sometimes the baits we throw for those snakehead just happen to latch onto a nice 
spring pre-spawn bass and what can you do right while i'm casting away why don't i do this why don't i just show you a clip of that snakehead i caught last year on my birthday throwing a vibrating jig so check it out it was a cast to catch situation not a big one by any means but i was out of my mind ecstatic so it was one heck of a day of bass fishing in general and then to latch on to that uh made my birthday something pretty special it was a pretty pretty awesome catch so yeah snakeheads are in here they're in here uh and the population is growing from what i understand so there's always that chance right All right, I'm definitely seeing more suspended fish out here. So I'm gonna again, put this little marabou jig behind the boat and slowly drift it behind me while I cast away here. Best thing about a marabou jig under a float is it's always breathing. It's always pulsating. Just the little bit of motion of the water and any slight breeze just gives that bait action. So that little guy can just sit back there, do its thing, and I'll just listen for a little bit of drag to squeal if one of those uh, crappie decide to latch on. Jeez, that's a good fish, guys. That's a really good fish. And it's not a snakehead again, but it's a nice bass. Jeez, just a really nice pre-spawner, guys. It's one of those kind of days. I had a feeling it'd be a good day to get out fishing. I was just hoping I could bring home some meat and I'm gonna still work at it. My bobber's right there. But this is a really, really nice bass. Another big red-eyed beauty. Bigger than the last one, he crushed it. Come here. There you go, guys. Big, beautiful pre-spawn bass eating the vibrating jig when the snakeheads are supposed to. There you go, going back. Gotta be honest with you, I've actually caught uh, yellow perch, I've caught crappie, I've caught actually a handful of different species that I can take home out of this lake to eat. I've, I've caught bluegill on this little vibrating jig, so. It's just a matter of time before something random happens and I get to throw something on the stringer, but if these bass want to keep biting, I'll just let them keep biting. Okay, no crappie on any brush piles, no snakeheads on any shoreline, just those two bass that decided to play. And now I am fishing the catch everything Ned rig and hopefully we can catch anything. Uh, I've caught tons of crappie and I've caught yellow perch. I've caught, you guys know the Ned rig catches everything. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to throw this and see what bites and hopefully it'll be something that goes on the stringer. It's about 5.30 and I've got about an hour I'm going to spend back here. And then I'm going to head back to the boat ramp and there are definitely a couple spots that away where I think I might be able to put a couple fish on the stringer. So let's just play for a couple minutes here up to an hour I should say with a Ned rig and see how it goes okay so I put up the Ned rig and now I am pretty much in the heart of this park here and I got a few docks to play with for some of these crappie I got a really super ultralight rig here that will hopefully get me something two pound test a tiny little float an itty bitty little probably a barely a sixteenth of an ounce jig head with a tiny little grub like thing looking like a tiny little bait fish so Let's see if any of these crappie want to grab on and come home with me. All right, nothing at the boat docks. <laughs> We're having a tough time finding some fish to bring home for dinner. But uh, they're in here. It's just a matter of figuring them out. I don't do this that much, so it's a little bit of a learning curve for me. So we'll see if we can pull something off before this is over. Uh, heading back towards the boat ramp. Not too far from there. And there are a couple good, good little spots that I might be able to hit. So let's see where it takes us. Oh, there's a fish. I got me something. Let's see what it is. It feels like a decent... Oh, guys, I'm hanging out with my man, my man Leroy, right? Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I got the L right. I thought there was something involved there, but uh, Larry, Larry Leroy is right behind me. We're just chatting about where the heck these, uh, where the heck these uh, crappie are, but we couldn't find any. But guys, I think I got a big, I got a big bass on here, a nice bass on a Ned rig, and I thought I'd get him off this point. 
just chatting it up talking about how difficult it was to find dinner tonight and i thought a ned rig would be a good thing to throw just whether it be a bass whether it be a crappie who knows but i got him right in the nose and that's bass number three right here larry it's a good one it's about as big as the uh about as big as the first one i caught today if i can get him there he is <laughs> Check out that bass. That's another fat, chunky, pre-spawn bass on a Ned rig, the catch-everything rig. It's not catching me dinner, but it's catching me a good one. What do you think, Larry? That's almost three. Yeah, I would say. Awesome bass. That's number three, so let's put that one back. We got a little bit of light left. All right, that's going to do it. I guess it's uh, frozen pizza for me tonight. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad I can get out here, guys, in this crazy world of ours, you know, with Maryland's a lockdown going on again it's no recreational fishing it is fishing for food only which is what I tried to do today I'm just happy I actually got hold of a couple bass that tried to take my bait when I was trying to get anything I could bring home to eat so as always I appreciate you joining me as always I appreciate you subscribing until we meet again over and out <laughs>